tomorrow. Uh, joining me now, Delaware Democratic Senator Chris Coons, a member of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, first of all, Vladimir Putin going after the Obama White House, defending Donald Trump, strong language back and forth. Where are we right now with Moscow and well, this incoming is, administration? This is a really remarkable time, Andrea. First, I hope we're going to see more of the White House press conference under a Trump administration. Uh, second, it's my real hope uh, that President-elect Trump will distinguish himself, distance himself from these outrageous accusations by Vladimir Putin. We have a bipartisan senatorial investigation underway right now by the Intelligence Committee into whether or not there were inappropriate ties between the Trump campaign uh, and the Russian government led by Vladimir Putin. There's clear evidence uh, that Russia engaged in a widespread campaign to undermine the integrity of our election. Uh, I think it's important that we listen to the American intelligence community, to concerns in Congress, uh, not to Vladimir Putin, someone who really doesn't have our best interests at heart. And the accusations back and forth between John Brennan of the intelligence community, the CIA director, and Donald Trump tweets back and forth, uh, defending Brennan, defending himself, saying he was not the leaker of that, and reacting, I, on my reporting is, to the analogy that the intelligence community was acting like Nazi Germany. That analogy really Stunning. put them over the edge. And talking about the stars on the wall, the men and women who have sacrificed, given their lives. If you think about it, Andrea, a year ago, when Vladimir Putin sat down with a group of his senior leaders at the Kremlin and sketched out the idea that they might somehow be able to undermine uh, the strength and the durability of American democracy, our alliance with NATO, our closeness with the EU, they couldn't have imagined they'd succeed this much to have a public dispute between our president-elect and the outgoing head of the CIA, to have so much tension and discord between the United States, uh, Angela Merkel, NATO, EU, just caused over the last few days by some of the reckless and irresponsible tweets by the president-elect. It's my hope that we will see some forces in the Trump administration um, pushing towards the center and that some of the voices in Congress, both Republican and Democrat, that are cautioning President-elect Trump against taking the side of Vladimir Putin against our vital European allies uh, will yet win out and stabilize uh, the path forward here. What is the prospect for Rex Tillerson? You're on the committee uh, for confirmation. And the decisive vote seems to be in the hands of Marco Rubio, a Republican. Well, he didn't uh, quit himself very well in our confirmation hearing. He had a nine-hour-long hearing. Um, it is clear that he is well-experienced, that he's seasoned, he's traveled around the world extensively, he knows world leaders, uh, and he gave some strong and firm answers, answers that really differed from President-elect Trump's positions on the JCPOA, on the Paris Climate Agreement, on the importance of NATO, and that was encouraging. But on human rights and on climate change, in response to withering questions, from Senator Rubio and others, he didn't do so well. So I frankly think his confirmation is uncertain at this point uh, and is largely in the hands of a few undecided members. Theresa May in the UK is talking about a clean break on Brexit, although it does take some time to disentangle. And there's talk between the incoming Trump administration and the Brits about a bilateral trade agreement, a relationship that doesn't really help America that much, right. given the size of the European Union economically and what they can offer, rather than, frankly, this connection to, right. uh, to Great Britain. It's a puzzling choice by May, um, when given the opportunity uh, to retain some economic ties, uh, some ongoing ties to the EU, uh, to choose instead a complete severance of her ties with the mainland, with, uh, Europe, with the European Union. Um, I do think that they're one of our closest, most important, strongest economic and political partners. Uh, and if the Trump administration seeks to move forward a bilateral deal uh, with the UK, it'll get a favorable hearing uh, fairly quickly. Um, but I am surprised um, that Prime Minister has made this strong step to completely sever ties with the European Union. And uh, before I let you go, can I infer from what you've said, have you decided how you're going to vote on Tillerson and what are you going to do about Sessions because you're on judiciary also? Uh, I've publicly said that I will vote against Jeff Sessions for Attorney General. Uh, we've worked well together in the six years we served on the Judiciary Committee, but there are just far too many policy areas uh, where he has opposed bipartisan efforts to make progress. Um, Senate, uh, Mr. Tillerson and I actually had a, a very constructive hour and a half meeting the week before his confirmation hearing. Uh, I am still weighing my vote on that. I am undecided. Uh, and I am meeting uh, with Nikki Haley, who's the nominee to be the UN ambassador this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to be consulting with a number of my colleagues, both Republican and Democrat, before reaching a final decision on Rex Tillerson. Chris Coons, thank you so very much. Thank